Our buddy Joe Biscalia, Bills beat reporter for WKBW out of Buffalo, WKBW.com, joining us now. And Joe wrote earlier this week that a former first-round pick and quarterback E.J. Manuel, quote-unquote, does not show some serious progress this spring and summer at OTAs, minicamp, and training camp. Well, may be enjoying his final few months in Buffalo as a member of the organization. And Joe Biscalia joining us right now. Joe, what leads you to that conclusion? What makes you feel that way? Around the time of the draft, you talk as a reporter, you should be trying to talk to anyone and everyone that you can. And what when I was trying to narrow down what the Bills were going to do in the draft of the second round, then you inevitably start talking about the rest of the team and and what may or may not happen. And the the one thing that I kind of stumbled upon was was that, that if EJ doesn't show significant progress, that it it could could very well be curtains for him. Now, what exactly is significant progress, whether it be, he needs to start for this team in order to stick with the with the organization. Uh, that that is unclear. But uh, unless he takes steps forward to where he was, because he was not a an NFL starting caliber quarterback in his time on the field last year. So if he doesn't take steps forward from that, then I think uh, I think he could be in a bit of trouble. But you know that's that's totally on him. If he comes into camp relaxed and ready to go and and is able to show that he has progressed as as a player and show show that he has made a little bit of a jump up. I'm sure the Bills wouldn't hesitate with keeping him, but you know, this is definitely a make or break year for E. J. Manuel, there's no doubt. And you know, Doug Whaley has said as much and, and he meant it. Now Joe, since you've you know, drop this report. We've heard rumblings from Buffalo saying it's not true. EJ's going to be here. Do, do you stand by the fact he may not make this 53-man roster? Yeah, I mean, what else are they going to say right now? He's still on the team. When Greg Roman, the offensive coordinator, was asked about it yesterday, it was in the wrong context. And the question to him was um, it was something along the lines of, hey, what about the, the speculation that EJ has fallen out of favor? That's that's not the case. They're giving all of these guys a legitimate chance. And and if he doesn't perform, then at that point, then it becomes an issue. But all that said, I think uh, I think with with him in in this training camp coming up, uh, it he has to show something because I don't know that they have enough roster flexibility to keep three quarterbacks and they just traded for Matt Castle in the offseason. They signed Tyrod Taylor to a two-year deal and gave him some guaranteed money, so they're not going to release him. So there's the there's a certain amount to be said about where and how many quarterbacks can actually fit on this roster. Joe Biscalia, Buffalo Bills beat reporter for WKBW out of Buffalo at Joe Biscalia on Twitter. Joe, what is the belief that the team has behind EJ? I mean, if you you know talk to guys off the record, is there a feeling that they feel like he can play well enough? That, that do they believe that he's still got this potential that he can hit? The significant concerns about EJ Manuel stem from the fact that he just point blank is not accurate, and he hasn't been accurate dating back to his freshman season at Florida State. For the past six years, he has shown a certain trend where he struggles in the intermediate areas to to hit passes where it completely just takes the receiver off his course, and he has to adjust to make the catch, and then it takes away each and every opportunity to get yards after the catch, which could have advanced the offense a lot more from a passing game perspective. It just Joe, it just seems like if there was a better fit for him than Greg Roman, I don't know who it is. You know, you got a physical, athletic quarterback who can run a little bit. I mean, clearly not as accurate as Kaepernick was in San Francisco, but it almost seems like, you know, with the ground and pound offense, this would be EJ's best shot in the NFL. And that's why they like Tyrod Taylor, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I mean, Tyrod Taylor uh, has that mobile background, and he is not afraid to run. This coaching staff, this GM, sign Tyrod Taylor as opposed to E.J. Manuel, who is drafted by a different coaching staff and a different GM. Joe, that's one of the biggest fights that Armin and I have on the show. I think Rex and everybody love Tyrod Taylor. He's going to get a legitimate shot at that starting job. Armin thinks I'm insane. Am I insane? (laughs) I don't think you're insane because I think they look at him as kind of an X factor in the situation. But I also believe that they look at Matt Castle's 
as the likely favorite to win that job. Joe Biscaglia of WKBW, WKBW WKBW.com. Joe, how shocked are you that Rex Ryan has been able to keep his mouth shut about the flake gate and everything going on with it? (laughs) Well, I think if this was in the first three years of Rex being a head coach, he probably would have just let it fly. But uh, the fact that he's a grizzled vet now and he's been burned a few times by the New York media, I think he, he knows a little bit better than that. And, uh, there was even a time in in a uh, previous press conference where he looked at it and said, you know, I, I, in years past I would probably take a swing at that one, but this time around I'm just going to let that pitch go by. Joe Viscalia of WKBW, WKBW.com. Uh, Joe, the draft for the Bills, they, they got a little bit of heat. They didn't add anybody who uh, the press feels is going to help them this year. Uh, as a guy on the ground, how do you, how do you perceive the draft, and, and how are the Bills coaches reacting to the drafted players? They have an opportunity for one to start right away, and that would be John Miller, the, the guard from third round from the third round out of Louisville. They like him a lot. They've been impressed by him from, a, from an IQ standpoint and, and being able to just know exactly what they're trying to do on offense. And Greg Roman made, uh, made the joke uh, yesterday that uh, after their pre-draft visit with John Miller, he, he said to someone, hey, this guy knows the offense better than I do. He was uh, <laughs> tongue was firmly in cheek there, but, uh, but still, that's how impressive John Miller was. And he's that big, powerful type of guard that, uh, that the Bills and Greg Roman especially, especially like nowadays. 